In my first year of selling online, I did over $150,000 in revenue, but less than 12,000 of that was profit. In e-commerce and in a lot of online selling communities, we're taught that we should be like Amazon was in their early days, focus on revenue today and worry about profit tomorrow. When I started, I took this advice to heart, but five years later today, I have two businesses and together those e-commerce businesses are going to be generating over seven figures in revenue. Now revenue is one thing and profit is everything because that allows you to reinvest in your business as well as it also allows you to pay yourself. For my businesses, I operate between a 30 to 25% profit margin depending on the business. So in this video, I wanna go over the accounting for my business. I'm going to be showing you how I keep track of my numbers and how I operate my business to make sure that I am profitable. I have a lot of different businesses and two of them are e-commerce businesses. For my main business, that primarily sells wholesale and private label. And for a lot of that profit, it gets reinvested into my business. For my second business, which we're gonna be taking a look at today, that is 100% wholesale dropshipping. For the profit generated from that business, I do reinvest some of the money, However, a lot of that money is used as a salary to pay to me. The key factor for this business is that since I'm drop shipping, a lot of the products are not bought up front, so a lot of the money is being spent once the customer pays for the item. Additionally, since I have several different businesses, I need to create systems in my business so that I don't have to work on them 24 seven. This is why I hire virtual assistants, as well as I also use a lot of different software in my business to automate certain aspects of the business so I don't have to do every single task. Before we take a look at some of the numbers, I also just wanna quickly say that every business operates differently. For some of my businesses, I think of those businesses as long-term plays. All of the profit or most of the profit gets reinvested into the business because I think that the money will be better spent or better utilized in that business. But for other businesses like my wholesale dropshipping business, I use those to either pay myself a salary or to fund other businesses depending on what I wanna do with that money at that time. One aspect that I noted in the intro is that this business is primarily passive income. I employ two virtual assistants located in the Philippines and they handle customer service, they handle placing orders, as well as they also handle tracking. And some of that is also handled by software. So I don't need to go ahead and work on a lot of the small details. I focus on bigger details, such as working with new suppliers, as well as just the future of the business. So we're gonna be taking a look at last month for this business. Now do keep in mind that I work off of a cash-based accounting system. So that means that when cash is in hand and it's not when I get an invoice, all this is cash received. As you can see, I'm using an app called Bench. Bench is connected to all of my sales channels, including Amazon, eBay, Etsy, and Shopify, as well as it's also connected to my credit card and my bank account. For the month of November in 2021, this business did about $32,000 in revenue, and then I had about $2,000 in returns. So as you can see, the total revenue was about $30,859. And then my total profit after all of my expenses, this includes my cost of goods sold or the items I needed to purchase in order to go ahead and fulfill those orders, as well as my software and my virtual assistants was $7,310, which is around a 25% profit margin. The good thing about Bench is that it allows me to get a breakdown of my numbers and I don't really have to focus on my bookkeeping too much. I'm not affiliated with them. It's just a tool that I like and I use in my business. So here's the breakdown of my business. As you can see, $18,465 was put towards cost of goods sold and that's all the product I needed to purchase in order to fulfill my orders. Here you have merchant fees. These are all the fees paid to the selling platforms. That's going to be Amazon fees, eBay fees, Etsy fees, etc. Next, you have independent contractor expense. So this is all the money given to my virtual assistants. As I mentioned, they are in the Philippines and I pay them a base salary of $5 per hour. Next, you have professional service, which could be Fiverr, Upwork, or it could actually be paying bench themselves. But other than that, you have several other miscellaneous expenses. Moving on to the income statement, here it's going to give you a breakdown of your revenue and all of your costs, as well as your gross and net profit. So as you can see, my sales revenue was about 32,500. Then I had sales tax remitted. So a lot of the platforms will collect sales tax for me, and then they'll go ahead and remit that to the different states. And underneath that, you have returns and allowances. So in e-commerce, you're going to have returns. And for my business, I did about $2,000 in returns. And then I have other income. This is actually going to be cash back for my credit card, which I think every business should be utilizing a credit card. It's just a way to earn extra money. A really important metric to me is my cost of goods sold. So you have the total profit, but that is going to include all of your costs from merchant fees to paying your VAs, as well as the cost of your goods. A really important metric I like to look at is my revenue versus just the cost of the goods. So as you can see, my cost of goods is actually pretty manageable. I only spent about $18,500 in order to go ahead and buy all of the product. Underneath that, you have a breakdown of the operating expenses. So this is about $5,000. And here you can see I paid my independent contractor. I have my software hosting. I have all the merchant fees and everything else. So this is just a breakdown of all that. Underneath that, here is the net profit. And this is going to be my take-home pay. 
So after paying all the fees and all of the product, this business right here generates anywhere between six to eight thousand dollars a month. And again, this is mostly passive. I work about three hours a day on this business, either answering emails, talking with suppliers or just talking with my VA team. The other thing that Ben shows you is it shows you your balance sheet or it shows you currently where your money is sitting. So right now I have a breakdown of about twenty seven thousand dollars, and that is in my bank account as well as also in my Amazon payments. So that's an overview of the business. However, not every sales channel is treated equally. And another thing I want to show you is I want to show you the type of items that I look for in order to get those profit margins. One aspect of my business is that I work with wholesale suppliers and I like to work with smaller brands that offer Keystone pricing. Keystone pricing means that the wholesale price is 50% of the retail price. So let's say that you are selling an item for $100 to a customer. That means that the wholesale price that you'll pay is $50. Not every brand offers that. However, I like to work with brands that do. So you have to be picky with the companies that you're going to set up with because that is going to affect every aspect of your business. Another aspect that will affect your business is going to be the sales channel that you sell on. As you can see right here, not every sales channel is treated equally. So here's my total profit for all of my sales in the month of November selling on Etsy. Etsy has a different fee that they charge you than Amazon. And as you can see right here, here's my profit percentage for Etsy. Here you can see I did about 10%, 20%, 32%. However, most of this falls between either 30 to 20%. And as you move down, you can see that is relatively consistent. One thing though that I like to look for in my business is I make sure that I'm selling all of my items at a profitable price. Compare that to Amazon, however, and on Amazon, I get a lot more returns, but my profit margins are actually a little bit higher. As you can see with Amazon in the month of November, my profit margins tend to be around 50%, 30%. So overall, this averages in my business between all of my sales channels to around 25%. The items that I also sell are usually slower selling items at a higher price point. So for example, here's an order for six items and each one is about $53 and this one is about 58. So this order came out to around $323 including tax. And then for my cost, since I am working with a supplier that has Keystone pricing, that means that it only cost me about $180 to go ahead and ship this, including shipping. And that's pretty consistent in my business. Like I said, I focus in niche home decor products. So here you can see this order was for three units and each unit was $124. And then for this one, it's also Keystone pricing. So I like to work with a lot of suppliers that have predictable pricing as well as predictable shipping, which allows me to build predictable prices into my business so that I know that I'm always going to be selling at a profit. And sometimes I will run sales. I might offer discounts or I might do deals in depending on the sales channel, like my own website or on Etsy, but at least this way, I'm always selling at a profit. The last thing I wanna talk about is it's really important to know where your money is going. That's why I work with Bench. I also use QuickBooks, but all of this is just to get a breakdown of the profitability of each sale. And with the profitability of each sale, I can see which SKU or which unit is not profitable, as well as I also track the returns. Tracking returns on each product allows me to see, okay, this product is getting too many returns. Maybe I should take it down and other things like that. You should also know all of your costs and the breakdown of your cost. So for example, here I can see that my cost of goods sold is about 18,500. And then maybe if I see that my software is getting too high, maybe I need to cancel some of the subscriptions. Maybe I'm working with a software that is charging me too much and they're not offering that value that they're charging me. As e-commerce sellers, it's really important to focus on a revenue, but often we focus too much on the revenue and not enough on the numbers. Knowing your numbers, knowing your books, knowing all the data is going to allow you to make better decisions in your business. Knowing which items are profitable, which are not, which suppliers are profitable, which ones you have to get rid of is ultimately going to allow you to make the right decisions in order to grow your business and have more profit to reinvest in your business and for me, ultimately to have more money to pay myself as well as just to reinvest in other opportunities. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This was a quick video breaking down my accounting process as well as just how I think about profitability for my e-commerce business. If you wanna see another video breaking down how much money I make on YouTube, be sure to go ahead and click this video right here.